at uh, Next Berlin. So who are you? Uh, I'm Boris schneider Jone. I'm a product manager at Microsoft Germany for Windows and Windows 8. So RT has been out now for more than six months, for a while. Well, you can buy RT devices since about uh, end of last October, yeah. Since end of last October in Germany or worldwide? Uh, that was the beginning of RT, right? In the US? Yeah, with the launch of Windows 8 and Windows RT at the end of October, that's when you were able to buy devices that had Windows RT on. So here's a, is this German Windows RT or what do you call this? This is available now in Germany. No, th these are standard Surface devices. So that's, a, that's the, the Microsoft Surface as it's available in many countries of the world and actually um, coming into more and more countries each and every month. Uh, so it should be available in basically just about every part of the world pretty soon. And, and, uh, and yeah, well, as Windows is translated in over 30, 34 languages, there's also a different language version of Surface, of course, because the operating system runs in all those languages. All right, so is it, has there been any announcement recently about some updates and stuff like that, the features, uh, new stuff? Well, um, there have, have been plenty of things. So, so I know the colleagues did a couple of firmware updates, so they're constantly improving things like Wi-Fi or so. Uh, also, the apps that come bundled with it, uh, things for mail, the calendar and so forth, they just recently got a lot of updates. So there's a lot of things happening with the software. Like, like it's usual in the software market these days. So it's not like three or four years ago when you were buying something and it didn't change for another three years. Uh, these days, customers are just used to the things constantly improve, especially in software. So in software, the, the, the kind of like the question about uh, uh, what's it called uh, Windows RT has been desktop apps. Yep. Like the desktop area is a little bit limited. It hasn't been like increased, improved, the more features yet. At least not yet. Well. Again, you could say that uh, Office 2013, the version that's on there that has been slightly improved, there's been some, some, some fixes and some additional functionality to the Office apps uh, that are coming with each and every Windows RT device, but there have been no major changes in, in the desktop area, that's right. All right, so uh, this is the most popular Windows RT device, is the Surface. That might be, I, I don't have the sales figures, yeah. so um, I'm seeing Surface a lot of times, but again, I'm working at Microsoft, so we tend to have a lot of Surface devices uh, ourselves. Um, but again, also I know people that like, for example, the Lenovo Yoga uh, very much, um, the small RT device. Uh, there's some great stuff from Samsung and other partners. So, so RT is in, in actually quite a lot of devices. There is there is a Dell tablet that looks very nice. So, yeah. Uh, so. Uh so how about the Windows Pro, Windows 8 Pro tablets? Yeah. Have they been launched already? Well, Windows 8 Pro tablets, again, since October 26 last year, a couple of them have launched. Um, let's pick one manufacturer, that's Samsung. Samsung has a series of uh, devices, the ATIF series, ATIV, and they have like three tablets. Uh, one is an RT device, low end, then the middle end device that has Windows Home Premium on it, uh, Windows 8 standard version on it, and then they have a Windows 8 Pro device, a larger device which has a Core i5 processor, I think. So you have a full range of devices in all these categories, and again, uh, different capabilities. RT devices tend to be smaller, lighter, and have long battery life. I really love my Surface RT. Um, this, is, this for me is a secondary computer, so yeah, it's only secondary, but then on the other hand, it's secondary in a good way. So if I go to shows like these, if I go to, if I travel a lot, um, when I go to meetings, I only take the RT device because it can do everything I need on the road and I never worry about power. So I take it, take it off the power in the morning. I know at 9 p.m., 10 p.m. in the evening, I will still have some juice left. I can work with it. How long is power, right? Well, again, it depends. If, if you would constantly work on it, been typing all the time, I guess it should be in the range of about eight hours. Um, but nobody of us does that. It's a really nice big battery inside, I guess. Maybe it's taking a lot of space, it's a large capacity. That's good. I mean, they, they didn't like use a small battery. They use a good, big battery. Again, most likely. The only thing I as a customer care about is not the size of the battery, but it's more of uh, can I live with it worry free? So I don't, for example, people are asking, is it eight, nine or 10 hours? And I would have to say, I don't know. I just know I can plug it off the wall at 8 a.m. in the morning and at 9 p.m. in the evening, I still have juice left. And that's the only thing I care about because I know I don't need to run for a power cord during the day. So what is your role? Uh, you are uh, marketing? Yes, I'm in marketing for 
basically Windows 8 for, for consumers and customers. So I'm not for the enterprise people. So Windows is used a lot in the uh, in commercial spaces also. So I'm more the con Sorry, so the, uh, the memory card ran out. So you consumer Microsoft in Germany. So what do you say when people say Android tablets? How do you compare this? Uh, depends on what you're actually going to do. Uh, if you want to do productive work, if you're looking for security, um, if you have, for example, several people uh, using one device, I understand that Android in the very latest version has this concept of user accounts finally somehow, but again on most of the devices that's out in the market it's not available while it's been deeply ingrained in Windows. So for example, I can take this, I can just switch my tablet to a different account. Uh, I, on this one, I only have myself. I have a tablet at home which has, for example, my kids. And if I switch it, all my mails, my data uh, would be safe. Uh, another, th like, uh, yeah, it's, it's the mail client. So. Well, no, well, well, the thing is, Windows is a system that's not only used in your PC at home. Windows is a system that runs on just about every PC at a big company in the world. Maybe not at Apple's. But a lot of people use Windows. And so Windows is, on, in terms of security, user accounts or so, for many, many years been battle tested. So big corporations depend on it. So you actually, when you buy a Windows device, a Windows RT tablet, you get a lot of the technology that banks, that manufacturers, that IT companies use, and you get it basically for free. Things like user accounts, or one of the things is this, RT devices are pretty secure because everything in memory is encrypted. So there is something, a technology that Microsoft has been using for a couple of years called BitLocker, where you can encrypt your hard drive. So one of the things we do is we encrypt everything on this device automatically. Meaning if, if, sorry? 128 bit, super high encryption. It's, it's pretty, pretty good, pretty decent. Yeah. So, if I now steal this tablet and I don't have the password and I think, ah, I'll just rip out the ROM. I'll just rip out the flash memory and read out everything. You just can't use it because everything's encrypted and it's only decrypted when you have the correct password and all those things. So these are pretty secure devices. These can be used actually with companies. And you wouldn't try that with many other tablets because they, they a lot of tablets come from the phone sector. They're blown up phones. And Windows, on the other hand, Windows RT and Windows 8 tablets, they're small PCs. So everything you know about a PC and everything you expect from a PC in terms of compatibility with other devices, and in terms of security, does happen here. And it doesn't on other tablets. So are you for real using the Surface as your main computer? No, it, Surface is my secondary computer, Surface RT. So I have, well, I have many PCs. I'm a bit of a nerd. So I have about, I think I right now I have four PCs at home. One of them is my VCR with Windows Media Center, and I have a main laptop, and I have a gaming rig PC. But this at work, uh, this is my, uh, first of all, this is my private Surface, so it's not a company device, but it's still the one I use most of the time when I travel. Now, I live in Munich, we're now here in Berlin. Uh, I'm here for two days at Next. This is the only, besides my mobile phone, this is the only PC I brought. I didn't bring a laptop. I didn't bring anything else. I have everything I need is on here. All I'm fine with that. You're yeah. doing all of it there. Yeah. There's and some things I can't do. What? Photoshop. I can't install Photoshop or Lightroom on this. You use this, Photoshop? Uh, well, I use Lightroom. I'm, yeah. I'm a bit of a hobby photographer. I use Lightroom. I can't have Lightroom on this. But hey, okay, Lightroom, I run on a Core i7 machine with 16 gigs of RAM that eats an awful amount of power because I'm a bit of a speed freak. It would never work on an ARM device. But, it and, but work, I'm fine with that. It could work over the cloud as a cloud app. It could, but again, let's again face it here at this event at Next. We do have wireless connectivity, but we have about 1,500 people here in the room. They all try to use the same wireless LAN, and it simply does not work very well for us. So, so there are limits to, to cloud stuff sometimes. And when you go into really, really deep apps, Maybe sometimes cloud is not the, the very best solution. So Lightroom, I wouldn't think that would put everything up there. I have a 20 meg camera, 20 megapixels. I'd rather have those locally. So, um, how many enterprises are using RT as the main systems? I can't tell you. I don't know. You don't know? But uh, uh, you know the sales figures, or you, you don't know? 
if I would know them, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't tell them. So that's so somebody, a, somebody from from comedy. Redmond would then come and hunt me down. I uh, wouldn't do that. Yeah. All right, <laughs> cool. Uh, so, um, what else can I ask you? What, what are people talking to you about here at the show? Well, the thing is, or what sometimes is frustrating and then again very enlightening is that uh, there's still a lot of people that haven't tried Windows 8. The bad thing about this is that you think, oh no, they should know by now, we shipped this in October, but then on the other hand, it's always uh, very nice to see people's first reactions when you show them a bit, when you show them things uh, like, um, let's see, so favorite features like those charms over here, uh, how I can search the full system, how every app, when I now search for Microsoft, and I'm afraid we're not really very online here, so I see the apps with Microsoft, but I can go here and check, for example, the news app. Um, again, it would work, would we have more connectivity in here? But search, sharing, so all the system functionality where apps work together. Uh, once you show that to people and also all the gestures, so, so my favorite is the left thumb thing, so I can, all the apps I have open, I can just uh, pull them in and go through them, or if I just go in and back out again, I get a list of all the apps currently running and can directly jump into something. That's um, pretty cool. This is How often does it crash? Never? I wouldn't say never, but I, I have rebooted this about two weeks ago because we had a firmware update. In a sense, I did, then I didn't even turn it off. So it, if I just... You never had any uh, I, I two weeks? There was no crashes? I had no crashes. Like uh, slowdowns or needed fast restart or anything like that? No, no. no? Again, that, so it's that, very stable? It is very stable. Again, if you're used to Windows from the old days, Windows XP or so, um, things like memory management have changed radically, especially if you look at those, what we call the modern apps. So anything that has a large, nice icon here, um, uh, so-called live tile. Those, are, those apps, they're not really running. Even though they're updating the tiles over here, they're fast asleep in the memory, they can get kicked out anytime. So it's a totally different system than, than the old Windows was where everything could just eat processor cycles and RAM all the time. So it's, um, it behaves pretty well. I can just close this up, put it away for two weeks. Usually in about two weeks time, um, what would happen here is battery would be about still half full if it was fully charged. But when I open it and start it, all the tiles would have current content. So I would see the next calendar appointment. Um, I would see the latest tweets I was getting. Uh, this still works because it has something which is called connected standby. So once you do this, it goes into deep sleep, wakes up about every half hour, gets the latest info in just one quick burst of data from the internet, goes fast asleep again. So it basically eats near to no power. Um, but you still stay current, and when you go into the apps, they update very, very quickly. And the part of the data that comes on, on, the, on connected standby is part of an API to make sure it's not too much add data. And yeah, stuff like that. there's a lot of info. Of yeah, it's 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 designed to eat to a don't that it doesn't eat power because battery is battery life is very important, and that it doesn't eat data. So there's a lot in Windows 8 and Windows RT. Uh, where it automatically finds out whether uh, you're on what we call a metered connection. So when it is a, a mobile phone um, or um, uh, 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 a wireless hotspot that you use, uh, then the system automatically knows, hmm, there's a couple of things I shouldn't do. So not to eat your bandwidth. It wouldn't download updates or patches uh, if they're available. Um, uh, it, would, uh, it would reduce syncing. Uh, to a minimum level and wants to go again into a, a standard Wi-Fi network with unlimited bandwidth, it would do all the tasks it kept and do them. So it's many areas are so optimized that it's not really like, like the old Windows you used to know. So I would like to ask you a couple questions, like some thoughts that I have, but I'm sure you're going to be able, you're just going to say no comment. I'm sure, but I'll try. <laughs> uh, so uh, there's been some uh, press releases by Microsoft in USA about uh, all kinds of companies paying for Android. They pay Microsoft for Android. Mm -hmm. Is there any like official word on how much they pay or anything like that? I can't tell you anything about that. There's a couple of things happening. Um, there's patents involved and once patents are involved 
It's things where I'd rather say talk to the lawyers, not me. <laughs> and the patents are different in Germany than in the US, I guess. And there's lawsuits going on everywhere. Also in Germany, I guess there's news regularly about... A lot of, uh, a lot of companies use Germany uh, as a battleground for anything for that's patent related, for EU or even for the world, because there's some things that make it easier to have a lawsuit about patents in Germany than it is in other countries. But again, it's for all the details, you have, to, you have to talk to a lawyer about that. That's no out lawyers? of my... You don't have any lawyer here? No. <laughs> no. You could ask, I don't know. And, uh, what I think would be nice is just uh, to, to, to get official metro for Android. What do you think about that? Official what? Metro. Like a Windows 8 UI yeah. as a UI replacement for Android. Wouldn't that be cool? Um, so I've seen first Chinese yeah, telephones Chinese yeah. that, that, that are trying to do that. But that's just two um, Chinese guys. They're the, trying to, 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 to uh, use the yeah. Windows 8 look or so. Um, uh, uh, simple said, I th don't think it works because it's more than just the look. There's a lot of work inside here to make this work both for uh, private customers and for company customers. And there's... Uh, there's there's over 25 years of Windows knowledge inside this machine and you just can't transfer that over to, to any other machine. You need some very deep integration to do that. So Microsoft could maybe like modify Android to include some of the, the things that might be required to make it work. You'd have to talk to Google about that, I guess, on anything that's Android related. Okay, cool. Okay, but uh, thanks a lot for uh, looking forward to the... Uh, more devices with Windows RT, like uh, cheaper, I guess. Cheaper would be nice, like two ninety nine instead of four ninety nine. Everybody likes cheaper devices. I've heard that before. Yeah. Um, I haven't heard anything, so there's there's a couple of devices out right now. Um, that's about it. Thirteen point uh, three inch would be nice. Big one. RT. We'll the, 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 the great thing about Windows is that everybody can basically build a device and work with Microsoft to get something out there. So there's a couple of people that build Windows RT machines right now. Uh, I guess there will be many more in the future. And the good thing about it is when many companies do this, that they all try different things. So even as of today, there's so many different form factors, like you can get a Sony VAIO 20-inch tablet PC, and Dell also now has a huge tablet PC, and you keep thinking, why would I have such a large tablet? There are things where the applications, especially at home, where you'd love to have something like that. And that's the great thing about Windows, that all those different form factors and so, if it's somewhat reasonable and if there is a buyer for it, somebody will build it.